Hello, I'm Sophie. I'm one of the anaesthetic trainees. In this video, we're going to talk you through inserting arterial lines, some of the indications, contraindications and complications associated with this procedure. Before we begin, just a quick editorial note. This video contains footage of a patient undergoing a procedure in an operating theatre environment. This procedure was required as part of their routine care and no additional anaesthetic time, surgical time or procedural burden was incurred by the patient as part of their involvement with the project. The procedure was performed under general anaesthesia by a consultant anaesthetist with a second anaesthetist present to maintain safety throughout. The patient gave consent prior to the operative day for the filming and use of this footage for our vascular access course and for wider medical education purposes, specifically including this YouTube video. Nevertheless, blur effects have been used to disguise their identity, which may distort some areas of the screen occasionally. We mostly use arterial lines to invasively monitor patients' blood pressure or to allow for us to routinely sample blood gases from patients who need these done regularly, such as patients who have COPD, or DKA. Arterial access is painful and therefore we'd recommend using local anaesthetic if you're going to access the arterial system. There's a few complications from inserting arterial lines. You can damage the artery which can lead to thrombosis or a false aneurysm. You can lead to digital ischemia or you can potentially have complications related to the guide wire including loss of the guide wire. So it's really important that you never let go of your guide wire the entire time you are inserting your arterial line. There are lots of different types of arterial lines available and locally we refer to these mostly by their brand names. There's different ways to insert them. The one we're going to show you today is inserted using Seldinger technique and locally we call this a Vigon. However, the companies make lots of different types of arterial lines, some of which are inserted using Seldinger technique and some of which are inserted like an IV cannula. So double check your equipment before you start your procedure. When you're choosing where to place your arterial line, you need to pick the best site for the patient. The most common site used is the radial artery. The radial artery is accessible, easy to palpate, and the line can be inserted using landmark anatomical technique. Other sites would be the ulnar artery, which is a little more difficult to access, or the brachial artery, although this is not preferred due to the fact that it is the entire arterial supply to the hand, and therefore if this thromboses, you've got a high risk of digital ischemia. Arterial lines can also be placed in the femoral arteries, although these are quite deep, so you need a much longer line, or they can be placed in the feet, and these might be preferred in particular circumstances where the arms are not accessible. For this, you'd probably use the dorsalis pedis artery. So when you go to insert your arterial line, the first thing to check is your modified Allen's test, where you occlude both the radial and the ulnar arterial supply to the hand, get the patient to clench their fist, so you're trying to get rid of all the superficial blood in the hand, and then you get the patient to open their hand and you release the ulnar artery. You should see the hand reperfuse, go nice and pink again, and this tells you that the ulnar artery supply to the hand is good enough that if the radial artery is compromised, there will be a reduced risk of digital ischemia. So it should be safe to use the radial artery to insert your arterial line. Once you've done your Allen's test, palpate your radial artery and get really comfortable about where you feel the best pulsation. If you're struggling to feel the pulse, you can use an ultrasound as a rescue technique. However, you don't usually need these routinely. Collect all your equipment, open your sterile field and your equipment onto your field, and then go and wash your hands. You'll need sterile gloves for this procedure. If you're going to leave the arterial line in for more than 24 hours, you should consider using full surgical asepsis for insertion. That would be a mask, hat, sterile gown, and sterile gloves. You will need a wound pack, some sterile gauze, a chlorhexidine prep stick, local anaesthetic, a drawing needle, an injecting needle and a 5ml syringe. You'll need your arterial line pack which should include an introducing needle, catheter, guide wire and it's useful to also take a arterial blood gas syringe with you so that you can take a gas off the, the line as soon as it's in. You'll also need a silk suture to secure your arterial line if you're going to leave it in for more than 24 hours and a sterile clear dressing to cover the entire site. Position your patient with their wrist extended. You can sometimes use a rolled up flat pad or a bag of fluids to get the patient's arm in the right position. You want to clean the area with your chlorhexidine prep stick and then cover it with a sterile drape. Palpate the artery and introduce your needle at an angle that's not too steep so that you can get good flow through the artery without transecting the artery entirely. 
Remember, it's not a large vessel. Once you've got pulsatile flow, introduce your guide wire. Insert your guide wire into the introducer needle. One end of the guide wire is flexible and the other end is much more stiff, so make sure you introduce the flexible end to avoid damaging the artery. Insert the guide wire through the needle so that you have a good amount in the artery, but have enough that when you remove the needle from the guide wire, you can catch it at the skin and never let go of the guide wire. You then thread the cannula over the end of the guide wire passing it along the guide wire until you can catch the end of the guide wire behind the cannula and then thread the cannula all the way into the artery. You then remove your guide wire and you should see pulsatile flow coming back up through your arterial cannula. At this point you can take off an arterial blood gas or you can attach a manometer connector which can then be attached to your monitoring set. You should ensure that your manometer tubing is flushed with sterile saline prior to attaching it to your arterial line. Once you've attached your manometer tubing, you should aspirate back up the arterial line to get rid of any air bubbles and you need to flush it with sterile saline to avoid a clot within the arterial line. If you're going to leave the cannula in for more than 24 hours, you should suture the cannula into place and then apply a sterile dressing over the top of the cannula. It's useful to loop the manometer set around the thumb so that there is less chance for getting pulled out of the artery. If the cannula does not require to be sutured in, you can simply put two IV cannula dressings on back to back. And then apply a sterile dressing over the top of the cannula. 